Um, okay, we've, we've all heard of uh, Web 2.0, and uh, we're going to talk about Brand U.0, which is about uh, building a personal brand um, and using the online medium to do so. And uh, we're going to start with a quick Brand 101 um, with this image, which I think we don't look at and say, you know, Coke, that's a great brand. That's a very recognizable brand. Um, but why don't you take a step back and think about this image specifically as not a brand, but a product. It's a bottle, branded Coke. So it's actually not the brand itself. Harry Davidson, um, another great brand. But actually, you're looking at a logo. And it's a great logo. It's a very recognizable logo, well designed. The shape, the badge, the distinct colors, orange, black, immediately recognizable. But I actually wouldn't call that a brand. That's a logo. That's a brand. <laughs> right? And uh, this is actually my favorite definition of what a brand is. It's a great book which I highly recommend called uh, The Brand Gap by Marty Neumeier. And he says, a brand is a person's gut feeling about a product, a service, or organization. Gut feeling. I think that pretty much says it all. Um, so that's brand 101. But another way to think about brands, if you think of Google, which is actually one of the most successful brands today, um, it's consistently a rank in the top five into brand. I think it was actually number one. Um, and the interesting thing about Google, if you compare it to a brand like such as Coca-Cola, which has had, had a, you know, a lot of history and, a, and powerful marketing machine behind it, Google, up until recently, Google has done very little marketing and advertising. And so for Google as a brand, um, what Google relies on is the interactions that you have with their product, their, which, which really is their brand. Those interactions um, equal, uh, or you know, you combine that with the feelings that you have for it, and that actually equals the brand. And a um, great example, this is actually a visual that I put together. Um, if you think about how Google started, and you think about the actual search engine, and so what happened was, um, one day you may have heard about, uh, about it from a friend, you know, you should try Google. So you fire it up, and you try it, and you realize, wow, this is really easy to use, and oh, the, res the results are great. And so your first point of contact with that brand is an interaction. It's positive. And as you continue using that service, you realize that it's consistently good. And so that gives it credibility, which leads to auth authenticity, those positive interactions, a series of it. That leads to trust and eventually loyalty. So Google has really kind of worked its way up this ladder to brand heaven in a way through the interactions that you have with it. Uh, the reverse is true as well. Now, we know we've got some Microsoft people in the audience, but um, they had a tough time with, uh, with Vista. And almost the identical thing happened. Uh, with Vista, when it first came out, lots of people had negative interactions with it. That word of mouth spread, and they kind of worked their way down. Now, they're making some fixes and hopefully working their way back up. But it started with the interactions. Celebrities are brands, and Oprah you know, which is a great local example, um, is probably one of the best examples of a celebrity as a brand. I mean, she's a, she's a person, she's, she's a media, she's, she's got a media empire. Um, she's highly influential. And as we all know, celebrities have influence. Um, and again, Oprah is a great example of an individual with a ton of influence. And so if you think about the world of celebrities, the way that it works is that if you are a top tier celebrity, an A-list celebrity, um, in this sort of hierarchy, you have the most influence. And so that's why it's so critical uh, to get uh, endorsement from people like Oprah. It wasn't any accident that um, Obama got that endorsement. I mean, uh, that, that goes a long way. And so when we think about brands and we think about people as brands, we have to think about the idea of influence as well. Now here's where things get really interesting. What's happening, um, and it's mostly due to the web, is that everyday people are becoming brands, thinking of themselves as brands and acting as brands, doing some of the things that brands do, publishing, creating content, branding themselves as individuals. Um, the shirt is great. I was internet famous once. Uh, this is Peter Merhals, um, who many of you may not know, but he's very important within his own circle 
of, of um, friends, which are, are, are thousands, and influential in that space. And so a great example, uh, you know, Google comes out with Chrome. And so Peter is very influential in the world of user experience professionals. And so if Peter says that Chrome stinks or Chrome is great, people know that his opinion is going to be honest and it's going to influence them. What we're looking at is the web has basically um, catapulted us into this micro-celebrity notion. And the difference is, this is a visual that I put together to, to, um, to try to communicate this, um, and if you compare this to the other visual where there's a definitive hierarchy of people, that still exists on the web, right? If Oprah endorses a book, there could be a lot of people talking about it on the web. Her, her influence, her sphere of influence will carry over into the web, and it will have a very large ripple. So think of, you could still think of Oprah as a number one in terms of influence. But on the web, everyone has influence. And the difference is, as opposed to it being top down and hierarchical, um, an everyday person or a person who maybe has 30 friends within a, a network can also have a lot of influence. They can influence their peers. And there's lots of those people. So they can influence each other. They could even potentially influence um, the person who has the most influence. When people go online, they tend to see um, you know, what's going on, what's being talked about, what are people saying. So a lot of chatter can actually influence. So the influence becomes much more organic. And that's why I opted to show this in, uh, in, in kind of a liquid format, these idea of ripples. Um, this is actually, uh, I put together sort of a tongue-in-cheek list called the top 10 signs you might be a web liberty. Um, and it kind of goes back to this notion of people online acting as, as sort of these, these mini celebrities. By the way, how many people here um, are on at least one social network, maybe LinkedIn or Facebook? Okay, most of you are. So this idea of personal branding really should be relevant to all of you. Because what we're going to talk about in these next few slides are actually leveraging things like social networks to build your own personal brand and why that's important. So this is number four on my list. You stop thinking about yourself as a person years ago. Now you're a brand. And um, again, tongue in cheek, but there's some truth to this. Um, as people you know, spend countless hours managing their social contacts and managing their own profiles, they're becoming self-aware about how they actually come across to other people. And that's the first step in branding. So um, over the next few slides, we're going to talk about some people that you may or may not have heard of. Um, and the thing to keep in mind is that if you haven't heard of them, it, that really doesn't matter. Because um, this whole digital thing that we're talking about, this whole medium, it's the opposite of mass media. Mass media has to communicate to a large group of people with a ranging set of interests and boil it down to a common denominator so that that mass group can actually relate to the content. On the web, it's the opposite. The web thrives in niche. And so some of these people, like Guy Kawasaki, are extremely relevant to the niche they represent. So Guy Kawasaki, uh, he's a business person. He's an author. He worked for Apple for a number of years, wrote a book called The Art of the Start. And he's basically a god for people, um, especially in Silicon Alley, uh, um, not Alley, but Silicon Valley, um, who are, are in the startup business, who are looking to start new businesses. He's done it before. He's been successful. He actually does it on a continual basis. So they really hang on his every word. He's very important to them. He's carefully crafted a personal brand. He has a signature shirt that he wears, or you know, Hawaiian shirts, and um, he's, very, uh, he's very laid back and, and uh, uses humor quite a bit. So he's got a strong personal brand. Uh, Robert Scoble started uh, blogging when he was at Microsoft and um, kind of fits into this sort of category of what I said earlier, this idea of a web liberty. Uh, Robert actually now writes and produces content for Fast Company, but the reason why Fast Company brought him on board was because he basically took his audience with him. On one social network called Twitter, Robert has over 30,000 people following him a day. Every thought that pops into his head is broadcast to over 30,000 people on a daily basis. That's why Fast Company hired him. He brought an audience with him. He brought a niche audience with him, an audience that cares quite a bit about technology and knows quite a bit about it and is influenced by what Robert says and thinks. Seth Godin. Now, this is an interesting photo. 
you know, we talk about personal brands. You know that your personal brand is effective when you get an action figure made out of you. And so that is, um, that's Seth Godin's, I think the unicorn is sold, sold separately. Um, so Seth is also another one of these uh, figures. Now he writes a marketing book a year, one marketing book a year. Um, and certainly those things and lots of other things have helped him build this personal brand and this um, presence within the marketing space. But Seth also does something that's very interesting and he does it like clockwork. He puts out a minimum of one blog post a day on his blog. He doesn't even allow comments. But every day, there's a blog post, a new one. And so what that does is, and he actually, basically you're seeing him write his books in real time. But as you're digesting that content, it's, it's, it's sort of like you're having a micro interaction with Seth on a daily basis. And that's actually been one of the key success factors to him as a personal brand. So um, what I wanted to, uh, I thought maybe, what might be relevant as, a, as opposed to just you know, talking about some theory um, is actually put this into something actionable, um, this idea of brand U.0. Um, I've been somewhat successful with some of these things myself and so what I try to do is condense it down to um, a short list of things that we could do if you're interested in this, if you're interested in using the digital medium and using new media to actually build your own personal brand, whether that's for growing a business or uh, you're just really passionate about a subject matter and you want to be heard. So these are the five B's of building, building brand U.0. The first is to be ubiquitous. Um, so this is a visual that I created and it's called Life Streams. And a really easy way to think about this idea of live streams is every time you activate a profile online on a social network or anything else where you are basically sending out information whether it's photos, text, video, any personal information about yourself, you're basically creating a live stream. And um, what the web allows us to do is to have multiple streams generated. And many, many times these streams actually cross over and they intersect. Um, so, for example, it's not uncommon if, um, do people here read blogs? <laughs> it's the New Media Summit. Um, okay, well, that, that, there's homework for you. Go out and start reading some blogs, or at least start looking at um, maybe uh, what a blog structure actually looks like, because it's pretty interesting. What you'll see on blogs is you'll see content. You'll see things like widgets, you'll see content coming in from other places. So for example, someone has their, they're managing their photos on Flickr, popular photo managing service, and you'll see that imported on the blog. Or they might be using another social network such as Twitter to send out links and quick messages and you see that brought in the blog. That's an example of these live streams kind of converging and coming together. And um, there are some services, uh, there's one called FriendFeed that actually brings all of your live streams together. But the main point is, is that like Oprah, if you think about it, Oprah syndicates her content. She's everywhere, right? People can be now, too, online. You don't have to be in one place at one. You can actually produce content. A great example right here, the Chicago New Media Summit producing video, where you can take that video, embed it, and put it on another site. That's really what this is, is um, about. So be ubiquitous. Um, the second is to be social. Uh, and what I mean by that is not to just go out and hobnob at parties, which we'll do tonight, and that's fine, and that works as well. Uh, but if you cr are creating multiple live streams, that's not the hard part. It's really easy to you know, jump on a social network, create a profile, you, know, you can be up in minutes. I mean, that's actually the interesting thing about the f this phenomenon online, is that it's very easy to start one of these profiles. What's difficult is effectively managing these social systems. And if you're really serious about building a personal brand, what you have to do is figure out which ones work for you. If you're going to be on Facebook, how are you going to use that? If you're going to be on LinkedIn, how are you going to use that? Um, uh, great example. I actually put this presentation on a social network called SlideShare. It's like YouTube for SlideShare presentations or SlideShow presentations. So. Um, I know I'm on to something with this presentation because it's been viewed already 4,000 times in the past four days. 
and that's because it's been distributed on SlideShare. Actually, if you want to see this presentation, you can find it on SlideShare. Just do a search for it. So um, we have to really figure out how to effectively use these, um, these social networks and these tools and create our own social system that aligns with our personal brand and makes the most of it. Be interesting. Uh, this is Russell Davies, and he's another one of these sort of, you know, he's done a great job with his own personal brand. He's very important in the advertising and marketing space, specifically to, um, to planners, which is sort of a strategic type of discipline. And so he always talks about, you know, share what you know. Write down, create a journal, share your photos, um, basically document the things that you see. That makes you interesting. Be remarkable. Seth Godin, as I mentioned earlier, talks about um, this notion of purple cow. He wrote a book called Purple Cow. And very simply, he put it in a story. You're driving down a road. You see brown cows all the time. But what if you actually saw a purple cow? What would you do? Most likely, you'd pull over the car, maybe snap a photo, and you'd make a remark about it. Being remarkable is actually the act of remarking on something. The reason why I'm speaking to you today is because those visuals that I, that I just showed you earlier, I freely put them online, give them away, and people actually remark on them. They say, well, you have a remarkable way of actually distilling complex ideas into a simple visual way. And so that's how I started building my own personal brand. And lastly, you have to be yourself. You have to be true to yourself, and you have to have a personality in the process. Uh, there's a really good book called Personality Not Incu Included, written by Rohit Bhargava. And um, he talks about this idea of how faceless, when an org organization becomes faceless, they lose their authenticity. And that to be authentic, you have to embrace your personality and you have to um, be true to your personality and let it shine through. So we have to understand who we are as individuals and let that come through because that is what leads to a successful brand. I mean, uh, Harley Davidson has a personality, Coke has a personality. People have personalities, so it only makes sense. The trick is that your personality has to be true to who you are as an individual. Uh, this is Gary Vaynerchuk, another example of, of one of these personal brands. He gets paid many, many thousands of dollars to go and speak to organizations about things like this. Started a, uh, a video cast called Wine Library, and he's a dynamic personality. He's just in your face, and he talks about like ripping your face off, and it gets like that, and people love him for it. And that's just who the guy is, right? He's just, um, that's his personal brand. Now, he talks about this whole movement about being like a gold rush and that it's going to end. Um, so what are you waiting for? You know, get on this, do it, it's gonna end. I actually disagree with that. Um, I don't know if it's a gold rush as much as it is that uh, with digital technology and what's happening in this space, we actually have an opportunity to create and define what our own personal brands are. And the great thing about that is that the opportunity is to do that preemptively before someone else does it for you. Uh, people here Google, Right? Do, we, we, do you ever Google somebody's name? Okay. That says a lot about that person as an individual and as a personal brand. And doing all the things that I just talked about can actually influence the way that you appear on Google, which will influence the person on the other end of the screen and what they think about you. So I don't know if it's a gold rush as much as, much as an opportunity to really seize what you want your personal brand to be. I think if you look at those five, that the framework of the five Bs and you do some of those things, they'll work. It's a lot of hard work, but it matters. And the reason why it matters is, is, is that one scenario that I gave you, which is that it's really easy for someone to fire up Google and find out some things about you and draw their own conclusions. So that's what brand U.0 is. That's why I think that it matters. And um, that's it. Thank you.